in today's video, I'm gonna show you all me making a pixie wig. I've never made a pixie wig before, so we're doing this for the very first time. But I'm gonna show you all the steps that I'm taking to prep my wig. And just in general, like everything I'm doing. So the hair I'm using and all that. So let's get right into it. For this pixie wig, I'm going to be using two different hairs. I'm using the Empire 27 piece with a free closure hair. And I'm also going to, I might be using Empire Bump Collection 8 inch. So the Empire Bump Collection looks like this. This is like your standard short hair that comes like this usually that you use it for like a bang type of situation so I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to use this but I have it and then the 27 piece comes in three different sizes so this is the shortest this is the longest length and then this is the medium length I have my hair and I'm going to show you guys how I do my measurements and transfer it onto the dome the canvas head so I have a 23 circumference head here. My head size is technically a 22, 22.5, but I am using a 23 circumference head because I do like to go in and just properly size it. So this is an XL dome, cop, dome cap, and I'm gonna go in and like properly size it. So the first one I usually do is, I have my measurements here, and I usually go in with the front to nape which is a 14.5 so I placed this here I did my first dot which is about like eight and a half from the bottom of the canvas head about an eight and a half yeah so I did an eight and a half because it's just kind of I think that when you do like too far back it kind of has like an awkward awkward like placement on your wig then you have to you feel like you have to bring the wig too too far back for it to sit right so I just do 8.5 from here that's just like a standard around 8.5 to 9 inch just like a standard but then going here I do that on the front and then I bring it here to 14.5 and then that's when I placed my pin at 14.5 so what I usually do is I will take one of these pins so I actually already did it but I will take one of these pins and I will put that at the 14.5 mark before I take this pin and pull it there and then after I do that I'm going to take I take this and I do the nape side so that's about a five and so I will take it and I pull it and I do the five inches right there and so as you can see this is the extra space that we're gonna get rid of and I'm gonna show you how to do that then I do and a lot of people don't think this is necessary but I do it especially I feel like especially when you're doing like a frontal situation even though this is not a frontal situation I still do it I do the ear to ear so my ear to ear is about a 12.5 so I did a 12 0.5 there and I usually use that especially when I'm doing frontal so that I know how far to bring the frontal forward here so that it still covers your temple area but here I don't really need that and I don't really need all these extra measurements but I'm just still kind of showing you all and then the last one would be right above where your eyebrow would be and then to the other side so my measurements would be like around a 16.5 so because it's around the 16.5 I am going to bring this cap a little forward here on both sides so about here and here I'm going to stretch it and so that's about so I stretch it and place that right back so that's about like my exact like face thing and then this is just kind of gonna help me know where to um, where my ears go so I'm just gonna put a line on both ends hopefully 
you guys understand if there's any questions you can put that below but so all the space here <clears throat> I will usually bring it to the front and take it off so what I do is I start by like pulling it a little bit and I take my pin and I'm gonna place that there so I'm literally just gonna stretch this throughout and show you I pull it I will like loosen it a little bit but this is me just pulling it to get like the kind of direction everything goes in so this is how I make sure the back is flush turn this to the side gonna pull that and I'm not putting it over this I'm not putting any pin in there I'm really pull that and pin it I still do leave some space so I don't make it like blush blush I leave a little bit of space just for wiggle, wiggle room so I'm pulling that place another pin and I'm literally just going to take this all the way to the front. As you can see, a flush back, right? But then, you're bringing it to the front. Everybody does theirs differently. Some people bring it to the back. Some people bring it to the front. It really depends. Sometimes I don't even bring it to the front. I bring it to the side. Like, it really depends on how I feel and I just pin it and so the reason why I was taking that out is because I don't want it to be like tight tight but just good enough <laughs> as accurate this is flush and then we have our pins here and so this is what I am going to so Make sure the curve comes like to the edge so that you can like literally sew that so that you don't have like so much issues with like there being like a curve like right here. Like especially when you're trying to sew it, you don't want it to like end up bulky or anything like that. So I'm going to sew this. I have my thread here and I'm literally just going to start on the edge and I'm going to pick up the cap I'm not going through the elastic I'm only going on top on the front layer and this loop right here on the end hopefully you can see that this loop on the end from where you knotted it is where I'm going to go directly through and pull I'm literally going through through this part of the cap and then through the front part not the not the actual like elastic of the dome just the top part and I'm pulling that like that and I'm putting it through the loop so that it's tight enough so I'm going to show you guys that again literally going through this part through the top of the cap and you see it creates this loop I'm literally going to take that part of the loop so as you can see now there's no loop once I put it through here you have a loop and that is what I'm going to put this needle through so I'm pushing it through the loop, pulling it out, and there. We're back, and I figured I would show you how I kind of went in, and I like just sewed all that to get rid of the excess space. So let's get into... <sighs> I wouldn't even call it the hard part, but it kind of seems like the hard part, the intimidating part, the map, I guess you could call it. But basically, 
I'm trying to figure out the sizing of this because I know I can't treat this like a regular wig because at the end of the day this is a no closure type of wig type of situation so inspo might as well show you guys the inspo that I've been looking at I'm going for a cross between I'm going for a cross between this with like the longer in the front type of bang situation if you can see that I'm going for this but then at the same time I'm also going for you know Nia Long tees like so basically a cross between Nia Long and the other picture that I just showed you so we are gonna see how we can do that I low-key think what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take this off and I think I'm going to put it on my head and to find the midpoint. So I figured I would come on here and kind of show y'all what I meant by a midpoint. So I took the wig off and I put the cap on. Right? And the midpoint I was talking about is like where I would feel like I would want this part to go. Right? <laughs> you know, I'm just doing this as we go. I'm using the medium, the long, and the bump. And I'm just going to go in and cut it. Shape it and cut it to how I want because I just did not like that did not like the short one and so I'm thinking that my midpoint is going to be so we just doing this as we go honestly doing this as we go thinking my midpoint will be right here so I'm gonna take a marker put that there put that out there and we'll kind of dry everything else and see how that goes I think I'm gonna do one and I'm gonna do a row under just so it just has that like flush look but apart from that I'm gonna start from here go here go there so instead of the usual half inch because I'm singling all of this I'm gonna do the usual instead of the usual like inch 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 I'm just gonna do it like that like in between that I may use this may not use this we'll see but this is just my first guideline right and I'm literally gonna take this all around Honestly, we just gonna see how all of this works. I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna do this first row right here instead because I do want to keep the nape shape because I think that the nape shape is important. So I'm gonna do the first row like that. So I'm just disregarding that. So I know that's confusing, but basically what I'm saying is that instead of going straight up like this, I'm going to go down instead because I want to keep the nape shape because I feel like that's important. So just going downwards. And then I'm just going to keep this. So as you can see, I'm literally just going to go around, around, and literally create like a dome shape so we'll be back once I created that let's keep in mind here that this is my very first time doing this and you're doing it with me so I have literally like kind of once it started going towards the ear like one level above the above the ear where it would have been your eyebrow 
that's when I started bringing it in. So that's why I'm like, I'm bringing it in towards here, going around to create a dome to where the midpoint is. So it starts to turn into a circle, like about three levels above, two levels above the eyebrow. I hope that is a helpful guideline in some way. If it's not, I could do an updated one. But for right now, I literally created my nape shape, basically where your eyebrow would be. I started going inwards and then like two levels above that. Two levels above where your eyebrow placement will be is when I started to connect the lines to create a dome. If there's any questions, please leave them below, but you're doing this with me for the first time, so we're going to see if this works and if this is helpful in any way, but I did do them so close together because I am singing, singling every single one, and like I said, I will be doing a track underneath, so let's get into the sewing machine process. Okay, so we are going to get started on the sewing process. I have my sewing machine on zigzag stitch. I could do a video on all that, on like all the details of like the sewing machine and stuff, but I did it on the zigzag stitch just to try it out and see. I might switch it to a single stitch, but for right now it's on zigzag stitch with a width of 4. So we're going to get started and hopefully I don't break the needle. So let's see. This is like, we're threatening this together, figuring out this together. I wanted to do the first row to match like the name shape. And then, so disregard these lines, these extra lines here, because I'm doing the first one to the name shape. And then the next one I will take that way, started from there. So, I doubled the front, you just didn't see that on camera, but I did double the front. But what I am going to do is a row underneath. So after I do the second row, I'm going to do a row underneath because I do want to be able to have it like flush to my neck. Again, this is me just trying different things just in hopes that like once I'm done everything will be like properly aligned and I don't have to like worry about going in to fix anything. So we're just going to do the second row and then we're going to do the row underneath. So I'm going to do this and then we'll see. So the reason why I'm changing that So that might look weird how I switched it, but I just decided to switch it because I'm going to switch it. can see here I'm not stretching the cap I'm not gonna do that. I also think that it's easier because it is short but I'm not stretching the cap or anything like that. so I decided that I am just gonna go through and keep sewing this and then we'll come back to that Cause I just kind of want to get as many tracks on there as I can, but I'm going to go back in and like fill in spaces. So I'm just going to show you one more time. Me filling it in. I'm about to do this really close, do this row really close. Cause I kind of tried it on and I feel like those needed a little bit more thickness. So I'm going to do this one really close in there and yeah. of 
hopefully this makes sense. You feel like you're going in the wrong direction, just lift the thread up, lift up the lever, move it where you want it to go. Don't try and pull it while it's still on there. Just move it where you want it to be, push it back down. So I wanted to come back and show you all the progress that I have made with this as I got towards the front where like it would be more of a bang type of situation I started using the longest length because I do want to be able to go in and cut it to how I feel like it should be so I was just like let me use the longer length so that I have like more to work with so I'm going to continue doing that and show you guys one more time before I kind of like go in and finish so just like a indicator of kind of what I'm doing I'm going to like right now I'm just using the total row of like the track like I didn't do anything else but as I get towards like the front and the top area I will like kind of stop and start and add different length tracks or like kind of just use the longest track towards the top and use the eight inch really close towards like the front area so that I have more room to go in and cut but let me just show you so hopefully this is visible but I am literally at the top and right now I'm literally just sewing the purpose. Literally. so whenever I get to the end I double it up and I get more hair and get ready to attach it still keep it in mind don't stretch the cap don't do any of that just let it glide I just placed it hopefully this makes sense I'm literally just gliding with the sewing machine following my guidelines I need to go back and go back. I'm just going through. And once I get to the point where I started, I literally lift it up a little bit. I'll show you what we are working with. I know I'm really close. <laughs> really, really close, but this is what we are working with. I did I want to mention that I did go in because I was sitting here and I was trying to figure it out so this is the front this is the front area that I have to trim that piece but I was sitting here and I was trying to figure out you know how do I feel about the back situation going on or whatever so there I did do it in a way where like I'm gonna have to go in and like trim it to kind of how I like it anyway because I did um, Cause at first I was saying that I was only going to use the long ones on the top, but I ended up alternating between like the long and the medium. But what I wanted to say is that I did go in and do the track that I was talking about. So I did that only on this very bottom directly underneath the nape length. So I ended up doing that and ended up adding another track over there just for a little bit more fullness in the back. And just to kind of give you that fake mullet type of look not mullet because i'm definitely not going for mullet but just like a longer tail at the back so that is what i did i sealed that on the bottom there for that look but we are almost done and then i'm going to attach the closure this is all we have left of space we have our bake here so I am going to figure out how we are going 
going to attach the closure piece because the closure piece is like this and I do remember like from way back when we were dealing with closure pieces like this you would usually just glue it or you would try and like hand sew it what I am gonna do is make this as easy as possible on myself so I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna pin the middle like this and I think that I am I'm gonna end up sewing over the tracks anyway so I'm literally gonna like lift it up and wherever I feel like the track is so I'm trying to figure this out so we're figuring this out together how we're gonna do this that makes the most sense what I think I can do is just lift this up and the extra lace that's there just sew around that so I'm thinking that is what I'm gonna do I already pinned the middle so I'm just gonna lift this up put it in a little hair tie and I'm just gonna sew around I am gonna end up sewing over the hair but I don't really think that matters like that so we're gonna do that here is the closure piece right here and right here is the let the lace so you can see right there that is the lace right there so I'm literally just going to sew over top of that in a circle like that I'm you can single stitch it or whatever you want to do but I'm just keeping the same stitch I'm gonna be honest and saying this was a lot easier than I thought it would be a whole lot easier than I thought it would be so it's very much a beehive, like you literally sewing in a legit beehive. So I am done. I did not end up using any of the eight inch bump. I do have quite a bit of hair left over. Not that much, but a little bit. So I am thinking that, you know, depending on how this goes and how I like, depending on how I like this length, I may make another one with the eight inch bump with like a little bang situation. I'm thinking that I wanna do another video showing you guys how to do this with an actual like closure or actual frontal so you have that type of look. But I'm gonna go in and sew in a comb in this. And in the next video, hopefully, I will show you guys like how I mold and cut if I do decide to cut anything but right now I feel like all it would need is like a little bit of trimming because I did like a variation of the medium and the long so thank you for watching and this is my pixie wig and I'm just going to you know I'm going to show you guys on the wig so it you can kind of see what it looks like and yeah oh I know I say so a lot but <laughs> Before we end this video off, I just wanted to show you what it looks like. This is what the back looks like. This is like the little tail part that I was talking about. I just wanted it to have like that kind of like V shape without having to cut so much just to create that V shape. That's why I did the track on the nape. That is why I did the nape shape first. Nape shape. <laughs> that is why I did the nape line and then I ended up going in and doing another one below because it created this V shape that I was going for. So, there's just like a few little things that I need to trim here and there. The only thing I know for a fact is I definitely, and I'm about to do it in this video actually, I definitely have to cut a little bit of the hair off towards this front side area because this is where I started off using the longer track and then I realized that that's not really the look I'm going for so I'm just gonna trim it a little bit before I put it on my head but I will go ahead and trim it on my head because I do want it to match my face shape and match my head shape and all that stuff 
but this is the pixie wig you know i do have to curl this stuff and kind of trim these bangs a little bit get them going but this is what we have and i just talked your ear off but hopefully this was informative we both learned at the same time and you have that shape all done on a sewing machine so thank you for watching my video i hope you enjoyed and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and also leave like some video suggestions in the comments below but thank you for watching bye